Hi there, welcome back to the Player YouTube channel and today you join me with none other than the Seat Leon ST, also known as a station wagon. However, here in the UK, it's known as an estate. Yes, an estate, that favorite father car that used to pull the caravan. Unfortunately, they sort of lost a bit of popularity over the years. However, could this new offering from Seat be the turning point and resurgence of the estate car? Let's find out. Let's get underneath it, let's get it out on the road and give you our evaluation. So, there are six different trim levels, starting from around 21,500 UK pounds, all the way up to the top of the range at around about 30,000 UK pounds. And there's quite a difference between each of the models because of all the bits and pieces that you can add onto them. Comes with standard 16 inch alloys, and when you get to the better in the range, you can go up to 17 inch alloys. One thing it does come with, all the models come with some nice LED headlights and running lights. And I do like the air aero on the front here. Quite cool. Let's take a look under the bonnet and see what the different variations are in engine and gearbox. Bonnet release here in the UK is in the passenger footwell. Obviously, if you're overseas, it's going to be in the driver's footwell because they're not going to move it around. The actual bonnet release catch is right dead centre there in the middle. Very easy to find. Just need a very long finger. There are no gas struts. So you've got to have a bit of oomph to push it up because it's quite a heavy bonnet and your strut there just pops in when I can find it like that there. Nice and safe and all set up, ready to explain to you the different engine configurations. So the entry level engine is a one litre petrol engine developing around about 110 brake horsepower. The next engine up, which is what this car has, is a 1.5 litre four cylinder engine. And you have it in two different variants. You have a 130 horsepower or you can opt for the 150 horsepower. Both very, very good engines indeed. In the two entry level cars, the SE and the SE Dynamic, they do do the option of a two litre diesel engine that produces 110 brake horsepower. Personally, don't think that's worth bothering about. One thing I do think that's worth bothering about is the 1.4 hybrid. That could be a really good option. Both and all those engines come with the options of a six-speed manual or a seven-speed auto gearbox. On that note, let's go have a look around the back. So, round at the back here, we get a nice aero spoiler on the top here. It's quite large, and that will deflect all the rain and the muck that comes over the back of the car, hopefully keeping this screen as clean as possible. However, if you do need it, you've got a wash wipe as well. You've got one of the floaty screens, which I call them, which is lovely because it doesn't have all the rubbers running around, so you don't get that water trapped in there, causing any rust or any rot. There's a bit of aero down the sides here as well, which deflects the air across, and then obviously that's mimicked again by this sort of sweeping bit that runs around here. I quite like it until it gets to this big Leon badge in the middle. I just That's one thing I really don't like. I think that should be offset over there to match up with the little FR badge there. Just spoils it when you've got a big S for Seat in the middle there as well. Um, two very large fake exhausts. They are so fake, you can't even get anything in there. So, uh, but I think generally looking at the back, it's quite a sporty look to this car, especially the back bit. I really like that. Now to open the boot, very similar to VW, you just push the Seat badge like that and lift it. A couple of decent gas shocks are gonna open it up you get the obligatory parcel shelf, which is done as a, like a roller, roller uh, blind, which is quite nice. It's very easy to pop out. It's quite heavy, but it does come out and that gives you tremendous amount of boot space. Now, where it really scores with this car is what's underneath here as well, because it's absolutely huge in there. This car comes with the the stupid puncher repair kit, as I call it. It's in here, it's got a, it's got a bottle of latex, there we go. Um, you know, just throw it away and get yourself a space saver. It'll go in here easy. You could almost put a full size tire in here. Another thing that's really good is this does actually go in here and you can get it out the way and you just slide it across like that. I'm gonna put it like that just to, because there is a place either side there, a little plastic. I don't wanna to have to put it all in there to show you, but it will go in there and then look at that, it's gone. And that gives you all that space there. Now, in order to put the seats down at the back here, you've got two handles, one either side, and you just pull them like that. Look at that. Now, now we're starting to see exactly how much space the ST, the station wagon, or the estate really has. And I'm gonna show you because it really, you know, some, some reviewers, they get all these cases and they get golf clubs and all that and bu buggies and push chairs and things like that. Forget all that, it's easy. You can see how big I am. Now let's have a look, ready? Oh, now, see that's good. 
First of all, you can see there's not a lot of height there. I have to duck. A lot of other cars we've done this in, I don't have to duck, so it's quite low. But one thing I know for sure, check this out, look at that, look. I could actually have a really nice sleep in here. And I'm being serious, look. If you had a double bed in here, I could go to bed. It's so nice. <laughs> and you've got, around here on the right here, what's, what's that little button do? Something's just happened. Uh, I think something's just popped out, don't you? Have a look down there. I reckon that's a large appendage that's just popped out. Is that my tow bar by any chance? Because I wanted to talk about my tow bar. It is, look at that. We've got a tow bar as well. It's a dad car. It's 100% a dad car. We've got a tow bar, I love it. So the little button over there drops down the tow bar. The appendage as I like to call it. Look, all in all guys, this is a very, very versatile car. Um, it may be an estate, it may be a bit old fashioned, but look at the space you've got. And with all this sort of, you know, thing that's going on around the world at the moment, you can't go away, you can't do anything. How more perfect is this to put a double bed in here and go away for the weekend, put a nice little trailer on the back with all your food and all your grub and everything. Absolutely amazing. Let's have a look around the front. Let's have a look in the back here for the passengers. I'm gonna shut the door there so you get a good idea of how much room and space there is in here. Um, first up, very, very comfortable seats. There's a couple of different trims that are available. There is like a mock suede that you can get. And then there's this sort of nice, so, well, it's a material, but I'm sure this can be cleaned very easily. So if you've got young kids in the back here and they've got spillages, as they often do, it's gonna be quite easy to wipe this clean and clean any of this. Very good, so yeah, you're thinking very much along the family lines here, I like it. Um, and thinking along the family lines, obviously you've got the obligatory Isofix points here, but these are the zipped up ones, so they're not those horrible plastic ones. The only thing is I do find the zips a little bit hard to undo, but there again, you're only gonna be using them once or twice. Um, you've got the indented uh, seat belts here, recessed, that's a better word to use than indented, um, which means you can slide across quite easy, which I wanna demonstrate now to the middle because this is a huge seat here in the middle. So there's easy three people. This isn't um, a move it and groove it lunchtime swingers car. This is a proper, you know, family car. You can get three people across here, two child seats, maybe a nanny in the middle here, who knows. Um, also in the back here, you get two USB-Cs, um, which will obviously charge up gizmos and gadgets, whatever the kids have got, but they're gonna need adapters for those at the moment because we're still trying to catch up with this new USB-C thing. Uh, so remember to buy yourself a couple of extra adapters there. You get totally independent heating in the back, aircon and cooling as well. It's here in the middle, you can set your own and you've got your own independent little uh, fan bits here as well, letting the air come out, which is really, really nice. Um, you've also got in the middle here, a pull down, shelf which is lovely so on those long journeys you can put your drinks in here um, you've got a couple of coffee ones or water bottles and in the middle is an energy drink one as well which is nice and as i mentioned at the back this is a 60 40 split and what you do get is the ski hatch oh sorry we're in uh, in the uk the b and q hatch now if you're watching from overseas you're probably going what is he talking about what's a b and q hatch b and q is one of our leading diy stores which is where gentlemen like to go on the weekends and buy long pieces of wood and tools that they shouldn't really have in their car and they need somewhere to transport them and inevitably they have to take the kids with them because they want to go to the burger bar um, and this is perfect absolutely perfect you're going to get your two meter or two by one in here no problem at all at least three or four of them and your two kids either side look at that absolutely perfect if you are overseas, then I might just uh, remind you that the skis do go in here rather nicely. You might struggle a bit with a snowboard one, potentially, but not two. Um, that all pops back up neatly there. Got plenty of headroom, really nice curtsy lights. I, I rarely mention these, but I like them because they remind me of those reading lights you get on airplanes. They are LEDs and they are perfectly positioned here. And I really like them. <laughs> Let's jump in the front, see what it's like for the driver. Right, let's check it out for the driver, see what it's like. First things I want to explain to you is this particular model isn't keyless entry. However, it is keyless ignition. I've already got the ignition on. Um, obviously, I haven't started the engine, so I just pushed the button, little buttons there. I'm going to lay the key in there. It's got a couple of nice little places to keep things in the middle here, which are really nice. Um, I like the sunglasses bit here, so you can put your shades in there and they just fit nicely and pop in there and it holds them. It's got a little button in there. Very nice indeed. This is the seven speed auto. So you get this strange little sort of button affair here, which uh, 
yeah, basically it's not really a gear knob at all. Your park button is there, so you just push that, very simple. USB-C up the front here with the adapter. There's two of those, um, which is, again, you know, like I said, you're gonna need them in the back, so you might as well purchase half a dozen of these because you're gonna end up losing them. One really nice touch on this car is the wireless um, charging for your Apple devices in there. Excellent, really like that. And it also comes with wireless Apple Play. It's got Android mirroring and stuff like that, but wireless Apple Play, simply stunning, love it. Um, double cup holder here, well, really it's a single cup holder and an energy drink holder, because it's one and sort of one bigger one, and you can't get the bigger uh, cup in there either, which is a shame, but maybe they don't sell those nowadays. Maybe it's just the little thin ones. In here, we have a 12 volt adapter and not much of a cubby hole to be honest with you it's probably just good enough to keep some spare change in there it's quite small but it does have you can lift it and set it up to what height you want as well very vw we like that one thing that's not vw is this steering wheel i love this steering wheel it's super super nice and on the fr which is this particular model you get this orange stitching round here and you get a little fr badge down the bottom here on the right over here you've got an adjuster that can set up your screen here because you've got this a very, very nice digital instrument screen here. I love this. You can actually set this up how you want it and you can change things and move it using the scroll button there. You've got an Ask Seat badge there, which is good. You can just push that button and say Seat, tune into Radio 1 or whatever and it'll do it. You can set it up to different commands as well. Um, this particular model has a heated steering wheel. Even better, little button on the right there. And then you've got a scroll left and right button at the bottom there as well. Absolutely brilliant, simple and easy to use. Again, on this particular car, we've got cruise control, we've got lane keepy, we've got distance control, um, all adjusted here very easily once again. Um, you know, I love the simplicity of this steering wheel. I think that's the thing. And also, it's just a really nice steering wheel to hold as well. I love the shape of it. Over here on the right-hand side is your lighting setup. It's all touch sensitive, so there's no buttons, there's no knobs. And as you'll see, generally, there isn't a knob in here. No comments. Um, basically, it's knobless. It's, it's, um, it's a eunuch of a car. That's the only way I can describe this car. Um, look it up, it's on Google. What you have got is touch sensitive buttons down the bottom here. So you can control your heating by going up and down. Just, you can hear it click as well as a nice little click. And then you've got your volume control here as well, which again is up and down. I don't like this guys, you know what I'm like. I love a decent knob to get my hands on. Um, especially in the winter when you get in here, you've got your gloves on and I want to set my heating out. I don't want to have to take my gloves off because I can't push the heating on there. I can't get the volume to go up. You know, it's just all a faff. I'd rather it was just a couple of knobs for those and the rest of it's nice. I mean, it's an eight inch touchscreen. It's really nice, top quality. Um, in actual fact, I think it's one of the best touchscreens I've seen in the car. It's just, and it's in a lovely position as well. Um, you've got all your, your wireless bits in here, decent surround system, DAB radio. It ticks all the boxes. Have a look at the uh, glove box. Now, again, decent size glove box, but yeah, I know it's only a small book, but do we need all this? Do you really need all this? This is all online. Surely you can just go on your phone and look it up. You don't, you know, the cost of this, we could have that space saver wheel in the back, couldn't we? You know what I'm saying? Nice little pack and luckily because it is a decent sized glovey, it's not hindering that either. Seating, very, very comfortable indeed. Um, yeah, I could do a few miles in this. Very nice indeed. I want to get it out on the road. I want to show you guys what it goes like and explain a little bit more about the Seat Leon Estate. Let's go do it. As soon as you get behind the wheel of the Seat Leon Estate, I think you're going to be pleasantly surprised because this car is just so, I don't know, comfortable, it's smooth, it's quiet, you get a good all-round visibility, um, it's got some lovely bits and pieces on it, safety aids, great sound system. Yeah, I really don't know where to, to fault this car. Um, little 1.5 engine, got plenty of poke, you've got four different modes on this car. So you've got economy, you've got sport, you've got the individual setup, you set it up yourself, and then you've got your normal mode. You can set that on that lovely eight inch touchscreen. Really nice touchscreen. I've, I've got to say, very easily accessible as well. At the bottom, there's some icons. And what it actually does, it once you've registered what those icons are, is they're like shortcuts straight to where you want to go. To the map, for example, straight into your media, um, telephone, it's all there, but it's just a simple little icon. And I really like that. You don't have to fiddle about and try and find things. Um, another thing I really love on this 
is this digital instrument cluster here. It's so versatile, you, you can set it up exactly how you want. At the moment I've got a compass on the right, on the left I've got the, uh, the, my, the fuel remaining on the car, and then I've got, I've got a real sort of um, different setup on the, on the rev counter, the tachymeter, and on the, uh, on the speedo. But you can just swap that around while you're driving along so easily, it's really, really nice. Um, also on this car with the safety aids. Now there's a number of safety, it's an NCAP 5 safety rating on the car. That goes without a shadow of a doubt. Don't, don't even question that, it's beautiful. Um, but one of the best things about this car are the blind spot mirrors. Well, they're not really mirrors, they're blind spot warning indicators. That's the only way I can describe it. Um, and what they actually do, so they don't come up in the actual, in the mirror itself. They come up on the door here and you see them in your peripheral vision. So you, you, the first time it happened, I was, Oh, there's a reflection somewhere. Where's that coming from? And then I realised that they're not on the mirror, they're actually in the door. Really smart, clever, clever thinking. And also, don't forget, if anything happens to that mirror, you've still got your blind spot warning um, system here. It's just genius and probably a lot less expensive to replace one of those because if you've got the blind spot mirror and as well as the heating thing and all that, it's going to be, you know, hugely expensive. Excellent thinking, love that. Um, the car also has autonomous braking in town, front and rear which again, I think all cars should have this. It's, it's so, when you're reversing, some is a little bit lower, it goes into your blind spot area, the mirrors are not gonna pick it up, but the, the camera will see it, you know, the actual, the, the, the radar will detect it, and the autonomous braking takes over in this car, which is brilliant, that's, that's a superb thing. The only thing I will mention on this particular model, this trim level, we don't have a camera. We do have parking sensors, front and rear, and there is a rather nice sort of visual display on here that shows you, you know, where you're parking and where you move, but it's not a real camera. I'd like to see a real camera on this car. I'm sure you'll get it with the, the higher trim levels, and there are so many trim levels as I explained earlier. So a lot to choose from, there you go. Um, mileage wise, let's have a look at the economy. Well, we're currently getting 32.4 around town. Not bad, uh, it's a 1.5 litre engine there. I'd expect that around town. It's a big car at the end of the day. Don't forget, you can have five passengers, a couple of dogs or luggage or shopping or whatever you've got in there. And you're still getting over 30 to the gallon around town. I think that's pretty good for a petrol engine. Um, Manufacturer claims 43 to 48 on a run. I don't think there's going to be any issue with that at all. You get this out on a decent highway, you get it into cruise control mode, you're sitting at 70, not an issue. I think that's going to eat that all day long, 45 maybe, 47, 48 easily. Um, a couple of other bits and pieces I'd like to mention. First of all is the simplicity of the, the actual steering and using these controls. And on the left here, the simplicity of the cruise control. Now I really like, watch how quickly you can activate cruise control. Even at slow speeds like this, you just go set, take your foot off, look at that. Look at that. That's how cruise control and other bits and pieces like that should be very easily accessible. Old dudes like me need help with modern tech. We don't need to be complicated. And that isn't complicated. And it took me 30 seconds, if that, to work out exactly how that entire side of that steering wheel works. That's the lane key P, that's the distance control, and the cruise control. Wonderful. I've sat in other cars that we have reviewed to remain anonymous that have taken me 10 minutes to try and figure out what I'm actually doing when it finally comes. It's like, oh, so I'm supposed to push that and that at the same time. It's all too complicated. This car is the most least complicated car I have driven in years. It's simple and it's bang full of tech, which is really lovely if you're into all that sort of stuff. I love the DAB radio on this, really super. And the sound system on this car is excellent as well. So all round, not a bad car to consider as a proper family car. I really think so. One little drawback out of the entire review of this car, one drawback I feel personally, three years or 60,000 mile warranty that say I offer with this car. I really do think they could do better because you think about it, if this is a, a regular run of the mill family car that's gonna be used every day, school run, doing the shopping, going away for the weekends, you know, the, all the sort of things that you would normally use this car for. It's not a second car. It's not a filling car. This is the main family car. And I just feel 60,000 miles is gonna get eaten up very quickly. I don't even think you're gonna get to three, three years before you're gonna be out of warranty and you're gonna be back down the showroom having to top up the warranty, um, especially if you're selling the car on as well, for example. 
Um, I think that's the only little bugbear I've got with this car. They could do just a little bit better on that. Maybe unlimited warranty, three years, that would be nice. And it would sort of catch up with the, uh, some of the other manufacturers as well, because yeah, there are quite a few out there doing that. Anyway, all in all, uh, my, my resolve of the whole thing, this car, the Seat Leon Estate, is go down to the showroom and get a test drive, because above all, you've got to like this car. I can wax lyrical about it and say how good it is, but it might not be for you. But I've thoroughly enjoyed driving this car over the last week, and I can highly assure you that I think you're gonna be surprised, because when I first got this car, I was a little bit dubious and doubtful, because it being an estate car, and it just, I don't know. But the estate is back, and Seat, I think you've done a very good job. So there you have it guys, another video from AJ the player and I hope you really enjoyed that one. I did, I enjoyed making it as well. But before you go, I'm gonna give you something for free. Yes, something for free. It's called the Player Bookazine. Now, if you're not aware, the Player is a much bigger organization than just a YouTube channel. We are part of a big magazine. It's a bookazine for guys. It's got cars, it's got boats, it's got planes, golf, helicopters, interviews everything us guys love. And ladies, if you are watching, please feel free to have a look because there's nothing untoward in our pages. It's all there for everybody to enjoy, but it's mainly geared towards a male lifestyle. There you go. Now, you can have the online version of this completely free of charge. You can't have the big book. Um, that costs £100 each. I'd love to give you one for nothing, but I don't think my boss would be too happy about that. But you can have the online one. And we're not even going to data capture off you, because all you've got to do is put your name in and your email. And then you can download it, or you can actually flick the pages online, because the clever bods at the player have made it so you can do it with your finger or a mouse. Very clever. I love using it. It's, great. it's absolutely brilliant. Um, OK, so now you need to know how to get that. Two ways. One is, hang on pull that in there, there you go, www.player.co.uk. Go straight to the subscribe section, just stick your name and your email in there, like I said. Hang on, I'll leave it up there for a minute, so you can remember, I'll do better than that, ready? There you go, up there. There's a link straight through to the website. Go there as well if you want. When you get there, just fill in those details that I told you about. Simple as, and it's all yours, and you don't owe us anything. And don't forget, like, subscribe, and comment to the actual AJ the Player YouTube channel. Because if you subscribe, then you're gonna get, you know, regular updates. If you leave the bell sign unchecked, of course, do that. And then we're putting up different videos every week. You know, could be anything. Even I don't know half the time. That's good fun about doing this job. One thing that I would like to ask you is don't forget the thumbs up, guys, because I don't get pay rises, I don't get bonuses, you know, it's no more money in it, but it is. Pat on the back from the boss and the sponsors. It means we're doing a good job. If you don't think we're doing a good job, don't give us a thumbs up. But if you do, I'd really appreciate it. Thanks for watching, guys. Catch you next week with something else.